So Alan, you've spoken about taking back power via policing, if I'm not mistaken. Not like taking back power. I mean, we are wanting devolution of power. Okay. Because the constitution at the moment says that policing powers are at a national level, and that's where those decisions are made. In actual fact, when the constitution was being written, it was written the other way around. But in the years just before we became a democracy, while the constitution was being written, if you remember, KZN was a quite a difficult environment. And uh, the reason that they didn't devolve policing powers, or they changed it at that stage, was they were worried that the policing powers would be seen as a military force in a province like KZN where, I mean, if you remember in the 94s and the 93s, I mean, it was pretty rough yeah. in KZN. So it probably was a good idea then, but then they should have stuck to the, you know, the six years because it was an interim initial stage, different forms of government in those initial stages before they finalized the, the constitution. But that's what I'm asking for. On the issue of railway, isn't Transnet handing you a massive problem? I mean, there's always two schools of thought, but in, in this case, I believe that at a national level, it should be the federal policing with oversight over provinces who are able to look after it. If you mess up in a province, that oversight would step in. I mean, like various countries around the world, the one that I really like, because we have quite a good partnership with them and we work with them at the moment, even on our current safety plan, is Bavaria. So Germany is quite a federal system and uh, the Bavarian police work with us. I've been to visit them, they've been to visit us. It's about uh, uh, writing uh, what it would look like, mm. drafting that those sort of rules and regulations. Uh, okay, but I, I think what I was leading to, why 1,000 and not 19,000? I think you want 20,000 police officers. So at the Western moment, Cape. there are 20,000 police officers deployed to the Western Cape out of SAPs. They have 200,000 police officers in South Africa. I think if we had to apply the norm of population to policing ratio, we should get 25,000 police officers deployed. So they already deploy too few police officers to this province. We've been asking that for that for quite a while. I think it's crazy. We've seen a whole national police budget being cut. And every time they say, oh, we've got another thousand police officers coming to the province, but they didn't talk about the thousand that left. So it's not really taking our number up. So we should have a, a greater deployment. Um, and so what I did was I said, okay, well, why don't we try a different system of policing within the regulations? So that's why they're law enforcement officers and not police officers. And they operate between uh, on a different set of regulations. And they're called peace officers. That's why they can operate. So they do have certain powers and they're just short of a police officer. But when they arrest someone, they still have to hand it into the police system because then the criminal justice system has to take over. But I think just I initially wanted 3,000 boots on the ground. But when we, why, why didn't you get that? Because then we were hit with something called a COVID-19 pandemic, oh. which destroyed the economy, took our focus into other areas, and uh, now to find another three or four billion, is that, you know, to put a thousand police officers on the ground with everything that they need, costs lots of money. So I would have had to find another three or four billion. Um, and now I've got to also balance it with the energy energy uh, crisis and with, um, I think, overall with our taxation system under pressure because, I mean, we've got a global possible recession and South Africa's uh, uh, position, especially with load shedding, is hitting the economy hard and uh, taxes hard. But it seems to me this isn't sustainable. I mean, it sounds like a double tax to get these leap officers. It's not I mean, a double tax. Well, you might, I mean, you're still paying taxes. Isn't that money being diverted to the SAPS? in another way and now, you're all also your taxes you're go to Pretoria and then it's divided okay and then the money comes back we get 81 billion this year in our province and that 81 billion we apply according to our constitutional mandate and then we also play around with doing things that are outside our mandate like energy and safety okay so, but, but don't you divert money from education and health to get these 1,000? Yeah, I have to. I have to, I have to make choices about where you, where you put the money. If I got the devolution, then I would get those 20,000 police officers and the budget and the management of those 20,000 police officers. Okay. That's how it works, right? Yeah, again, no, no, I, you know, I agree, but I mean, then you have to get it. Yeah, uh, and I'm working on it. And do you see progress on that front? Well, I think already I'm seeing Khao Teng saying the same things, and Khao Teng is a partner. You can see them on the devolution of power, of uh, rail and uh, uh, and the Prasa rail network power. 
So they are working very closely with us on that, and now we're starting to see them on policing, and that then changes the narrative. So it's not a straight political narrative, it's about two provinces saying the same thing. So in the last PCC minutes, you'll see even the president said, because of what Gauteng is saying and the Western Cape is saying, we need to have a discussion on policing. Moonshot fact. Do you think it's a good idea? On the issue of railway, isn't transit handing you a massive problem? I mean, it seems to me like transit is bankrupt. I think 95% of its passengers are down. Isn't that handing you a massive problem if you get those powers provincially? I yeah, mean, of course. But uh, should it be privatized? Of course it's got to be privatized. That's exactly what you've got to do. But I can't privatize something that doesn't belong to me. So what happens is when you get devolution of the rail system, and it'll start with cross and not the full provincial rail system, although some of the branch lines are being privatized at the moment, which is really good news, but the, the process system, so let's talk about the train lines that run for passenger rail. Stellenbosch, Drakenstein, Cape Town is an initial stage. We would set up an entity pretty much like the entity that runs the convention center. The municipalities would be partners, the province would be a partner. We then take the southern line and say, we are now putting out for tender the operations of the southern line. Company A and B would come along, we choose company A, they would get the operations of the line, and they would get it for whatever they want, 20 years. They would enable economic activity in the stations. It happens in thousands of cities. You know, rail operates on time, cost effectively around the world. That's the model that they use. We use the same model. And when you see that happening? So already the Treasury are saying it's about three years out. We're trying to get it to come in the next year. Moonshot fact. Do you think it's a good idea? Well, I think uh, it's exactly what needs to happen if we want to have uh, or don't have an ANC EFF government. We need to find coalitions that are going to, as difficult as they are, run South Africa. And are you happy with Patriotic Alliance joining that pact, apparently as of today? Uh, no, I don't think that was fake news. Oh, it was really? I think so. Oh, okay. Interesting. Anything you want to leave our viewers with before we conclude? I would say that I think that South Africa and where I am in the Western Cape, that this is one of the most amazing places in the world and it's worth fighting for. Awesome. Thank you, Alan. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time.